The Hyundai Kona originally launched in 2018 and it did so with a wide range of powertrain options from petrol to diesel, hybrid and pure electric. The design of the Kona fuses small family hatchback functionality with vibrant SUV styling to create quite a confident look in this class. It's certainly more attractive than what we had before. I really like the design of these incredibly thin eyebrow-like headlights which are halogen powered as standard. These elements nicely complement the bold gloss black hexagonal grille and the wide air intake. Plus I enjoy how the front bumper merges around the sides colliding with the wheel arch cladding for a rugged appeal. The side profile is similarly attractive thanks to the sporty silhouette accentuated by bold creases and sharp lines running down the length of the vehicle. As standard, you get 16 inch alloy wheels and if you climb up the range to mid spec premium and top spec ultimate grades, you get larger 18 inch alloy wheels. That's what we have here and you're seeing in this review and they're painted in this nice anthracite garnish. Roof rails come as standard, as do electrically adjustable and heated door mirrors in whatever body colour you've chosen. At the Kona's rear end, there's lots to admire with this prominent rear spoiler, large pane of privacy glass, metallic rear bumper and the rear tail lights. Love the way that they stretch across to the boot lid. Very attractive indeed. It's, it's most certainly the most rugged and adventurous looking aspect of the exterior design, despite the drive not having any of those qualities. But as is the case for the majority of new Hyundai vehicles, they've done a brilliant job with the overall look. Upon manually opening the tailgate, unfortunately there's no electrically operated tailgate option available, even with this top spec grade, you're rewarded with 374 litres to play with in total. There's four hooks dotted around the adjustable floor here to attach objects down that like to roll around. Underneath the floor, we have our maintenance tools, uh, some cubby holes there for, for odd bits and bobs, but not a whole lot to play with. It certainly could be a little bit more practical for a family car of this class. Extending capacity to fit golf clubs, bikes, etc., into the back is pretty easy to do. Just climb over the parcel shelf or take it off completely. Uh, pull the levers up on either side and the seats will flop down pretty easily, rewarding you with 1,156 litres in total. Cool, so practicality not too bad at all. But what is the Kona Hybrid like to drive around town and on faster roads? Let's get behind the wheel. When the Kona originally came out, it was criticised quite heavily for its rather firm suspension for a vehicle in this class. The suspension is quite firm still, but it has been retuned slightly to provide a more confident and stable ride. But for me, it still feels at odds with a small family-oriented SUV. It's not as comfortable as cosseting as a Citroen C3 Aircross or Peugeot 2008. This means the Kona Hybrid just isn't as capable at smoothing out those light undulations around town. And as we go over some humps and bumps on this country road, you do feel the impact of those uh, reverberate throughout the cabin. You'll feel some vibration coming through the steering wheel and the pedals, pedals as well, which is quite disappointing. The Kona Hybrid has very light steering, which on the plus side makes it very easy to maneuver around narrow city streets and into and out of tight parking spaces. However, unfortunately, it lacks a great deal of precision and feedback from the front wheels, which just means the drive is rather boring, especially when compared to other Hyundai vehicles, especially the Bion, which is much more engaging behind the wheel. The Kona Hybrid leans much more into corners than its rivals, though thankfully due to these prominent side bolsters, you are held in place quite nicely. And it does remain more composed than higher riding alternatives like the Citroen C3 Aircross when navigating those tight bends. I'm really impressed by how well soundproof the Kona Hybrid is though. There's hardly any road noise seeping in to the cabin from those alloy wheels. And at faster speeds on motorways, I don't hear much gussening coming from around the mirrors or windscreen. So it provides a nice, smooth and pretty quiet drive around town. But when you're up to speed on an A-road or dual carriageway, it's pretty settled too. 
Visibility is very good indeed, even if you do sit a little bit lower down in the Kona than you do with other small SUV rivals, I can see right over that bonnet to the road ahead. Slim side pillars mean that your view at junctures and traffic lights isn't that obscured and you get nice deep wide side mirrors giving you a great view of what's behind you. You can, you can have these with blind spot monitoring alerting you of vehicles passing close by. The view out the back window isn't too bad though if you've got a couple of rear passengers you'll struggle to see out of that. And I do have some chunky rear pillars to contend with though there is a piece of quarter glass there uh, to assist you though it doesn't really help that much. Thankfully though you do get standard rear parking sensors and a rear view camera to help you when maneuvering into spaces. Inside the latest Kona Hybrid possesses a much more refined and modern look compared to its predecessor with this wide and airy cabin. As standard the seats are manually adjustable but if you go with this top spec ultimate grade you get electric adjustment for the driver's seat. Also a standard, you get a lever wrap steering wheel and gear knob. If you climb up to the premium and ultimate grade, you get a heated steering wheel, which is lovely for those cold winter mornings. It's height and reach adjustable as standard as well. So you can line this up very nicely with your preferred driving position and jobs are good un. Behind the wheel, you get a 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster that shows you basic driving info such as how much charge you got left in that tiny battery pack, how efficient you're being with your drive as well, such as fuel economy data, etc. All useful information to see when you glance down at that screen. This is complemented by a 10.25 inch central touch screen mounted nice and high up on the dash as you can see there, so it's very easy to glance down and look at when driving along. It has split screen functionality so you can divide it in half and show navigation on one side and your media on the right. I really like that feature. Below the central touch screen we have our air conditioning unit here. These are very easy to adjust and blow in your face how you like. Below that we've got all the controls for the climate. I love that they're not incorporated into the touch screen. They're all physical buttons and very easy to toggle and press while driving along. Below that then we've got the phone storage compartment. You'll get that wireless phone charging pad with high spec grades. You'll also get a couple of USB ports and a 12 volt socket. Unfortunately, the rear space can feel a little bit cramped when we compare the back here to rivals like the Nero and the Persia 2008. Headroom's good though. At 5.8, you can see that I'm just a bit off the roof lining. I'd say passengers who are six foot over may just touch the top, but it's a good thing here that the roof line starts to go up before it slopes down towards the tailgate, extending headroom as much as possible. Legroom isn't too bad. I can stretch out quite far, but due to how highly the uh, rear bench is raised, I don't feel particularly comfortable. Well, certainly not as comfortable as I do in the Nero. And my knees come quite high too. Space is wide though, so I can stretch out and get comfortable. I just feel like for three adults in the back here, it's gonna be a really tight squeeze. This is mainly suitable for kids. But overall, the Kona Hybrid is still a great option. And if you want something a little bit different that stands out from the crowd, well, add it to your list. If you have any questions about the Kona Hybrid, guys, and you'd like to explore your options in more detail, then just give OSV's vehicle specialists a call via the number in the banner below. Alternatively, click the pop-up banner hanging out just up there to book a date or time on our website for a quick chat, whenever best works for you, really. And there's a link down below in the description box to browse the hottest offers we have available on the Kona Hybrid. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the review and found it helpful, do give it a thumbs up. That helps us out at OSV. Also subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure you've clicked the often neglected notification bell. It should be down there somewhere. That way you'll get notified when we upload the next in-depth review. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care and safe driving.